welcome to everybody. I'm sure people will keep um, keep joining us as we go. This um, this opportunity for us to have community connection with Let's Grow Kids uh, is amazing. We're just completely overwhelmed with the uh, with the outreach all of you have showed right up and jumped right on this opportunity. I want to just let you all know that this will be recorded. Um, so you can always come back and watch it later or share it with your friends. So to start, I'm just going to introduce who's here to co-host with me. So Maria, if you would advance to the next slide. And I will just let you know that you'll be hearing from me. My name's Anna Gebhardt, and I'm the field director at Let's Grow Kids. We also have Emily Blistein, the director of business strategy for Let's Grow Kids. Uh, Maria Richards, our data specialist with Let's Grow Kids. She's going to be really handling the back end. She's running the PowerPoint for us, and she's also going to be, um, you know, we, we have a couple staff actually will be checking for questions and um, just keeping us on track. And then we have Sarah Kenny, our Senior Director of Policy at Let's Grow Kids, Beale St. George, our Engagement and Stewardship Officer at Let's Grow Kids. And we have three of our local action team members and early childhood educators here also to help answer some of your questions. So we have Ellen Drillette, the owner and director of Sunshine Daydream Child Care and Dominique Vitoretto, teacher at the Davis Studio Preschool, and Don Irwin, the owner and director of Growing With Wonder. So welcome everybody. And I'm gonna go over our agenda really quickly so that you'll all know what to expect. We will start with a welcome, an overview, and then we're gonna do an update from Let's Grow Kids. And following our welcome and our update, we will answer some of your questions. And then we'll offer you a policy update and have an opportunity for us all to take action together. All right. Next slide, please. Emily, hey. are you? Yes, hi everybody. I'm Emily Blistein. I'm the business strategy director at Let's Grow Kids. Um, and as Anna said, there was a huge response to this webinar, which we're thrilled about. Um, and I'm just gonna do a quick overview of housekeeping and I'll join you back later to talk about some business strategy related stuff. Um, but just to let you know, we are doing a webinar style. So all of you are on mute. We can't see you and we can't hear you, but we are using that chat function so you can interact with us and we'll have several questions and ways for you to engage. Um, we are, like many of you, at home with various small children and animals and different types of internet. So we are going to be doing our best um, to stay um, as clear and focused for you guys as possible. But if there's any interruptions, we're going to hop back on and fill in for each other. Um, we do encourage you, as I said, the chat and polling are going to be used for your participation, but as we're going along, if you have a question, you'll see that there's a Q&A function just to the left of your chat function. So put your questions in there if it's not something to inter that you've been asked to interact about. That'll help us catalog those questions, and if we can't get to them during this call, we can follow up with you because it'll tie it to your email address. Um, so that's Oh, I'd also really encourage you, we've put up um, our Let's Grow Kids coronavirus webpage on um, the PowerPoint there so you can see what it looks like. We'd really encourage you to visit that. It has resources for early educators, for parents, business owners, um, and especially if you are an early educator, we've hosted a series of business online educational workshops already over the last five weeks. And so those have some really great tools for you just in terms of business resources. Um, and I also want to remind you, this is a big conversation. We're going to figure out where everybody's coming from in a minute, um, but we will be hosting smaller regional-based conversations over the next few weeks. So look forward to that as well. And now I'm going to turn it over to Beale to test out our first participation tool. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Beal. I'm the Engagement and Stewardship Officer here at Let's Grow Kids. Thank you all so much for being here. It looks like there's just over a hundred of you um, in this webinar right now. So thank you all so much. We really appreciate you being here. Um, and we're just going to test out the chat function that some of you have already been using. Um, so um, if you use the chat functionality, you can introduce yourself, share where you're from, what town you live in, um, and perhaps describe what connection you have to Let's Grow Kids. So maybe you've heard about us on the radio or you're a Facebook um, a fan of ours or you're really one of our volunteers. Um, so there's all kinds of different ways um, that people are connected. And so we just love hearing from you to find out um, what you um, already know about Let's Grow Kids or what you're excited to learn. So thank you so much for using that chat function. And I do just want to point out um, there's a message option to send either to all panelists, which means that the Let's Grow Kids staff and our early educators will see your message, or you can send to everybody um, by choosing all panelists and attendees. And so um, when you are introducing yourself, please use that function to all panelists and attendees so that we can all see you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Beal. Wow, it's really, really fun. I see a lot of really familiar names um, from the Brattleboro Action Team, from the Bennington Action Team, um, people calling in from the Burlington Action Team. This is really, really fun. And I see also a lot of new names, which is great. Um, Maria, would you advance the slides for us, please? So here is our Introduce Yourself slide. So I know that those introductions are still pouring in. And now we're just going to frame, you know, what are we here to talk about? Um, so Let's Grow Kids has always been focused on high quality, affordable childcare. And we are passionate about this for all Vermont families who need it. And for over 10 years, we've been focusing and strengthening the early child care and education system here in Vermont, raising awareness among Vermonters about both the importance of high quality child care and the impact that it has on Vermont. This child care crisis impacts our youngest children. It impacts working families and businesses in the workforce as well as our demographics here in Vermont. And the child care crisis impacts our economy. So Vermont advocates like all of you have really made this childcare and early education a top issue in Vermont. And we've built a statewide movement full of people and organizations working together like never before. It's really phenomenal. So we're gonna take a minute to use another one of the functions on this Zoom webinar to get a sense for where are all you calling in from? I know a lot of you put your towns in the chat, but let's look from a statewide perspective. Please use the poll to check off what county you're calling in from. We'll just allow a couple of seconds and then this poll will be published for us. We can see the results. All right, great. And Maria will show us our results and move us to the next slide. Incredible, as you can see, and you have to um, just look closely, there are people here from every single county in Vermont. This is really incredible. So it's a statewide movement like this that allows us to do our important work here in Vermont. Um, and I'm just gonna take us back in time for a second. So we're gonna go to the next slide to just remind ourselves that in a galaxy far, far away, once upon a time, it was January, 2020. And we had set out with a 
with a really robust policy agenda that consisted of these three main points. We were working to sustain and grow Vermont's early care and education workforce. We were helping more children access affordable childcare through important investments, and we were working to engage Vermont employers. And this were, these were the, the types of topics that were being talked about in the State House and the places where legislators were really looking to invest more in the childcare system. And the reason they were talking about this is because in the next slide, we'll talk about the fact that so many people were taking action. All across Vermont, um, supporters were emailing their legislators, calling their legislators, meeting in person with their legislators. Um, we, there were events happening. People were talking about childcare in every nook and cranny of the state and hundreds of people were registered to come to Early Childhood Day at the legislature and the Rally for Kids in Montpelier. Um, and that all happened right up until the beginning of March. And just before we were about to storm the state house with hundreds of early childhood advocates, um, well, we all know what happened. The rally and ECDL were canceled um, and we had to quickly pivot. So Emily's gonna talk to us a little bit about what Let's Grow Kids has been doing over the last eight weeks as we've responded um, to the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you, Anna. Um, so on the business team, our work is really working with business leaders to support their own employees um, and to meet their childcare needs through benefits and practices, also to support their local childcare providers and to become vocal champions um, to say high quality childcare really is essential for my business because without it, employees can't get to work. So that was the conversation that I was already having um, with business leaders and they more and more were vocalizing to us that childcare was crucial for their employees to get to work. Um, all of a sudden, when COVID-19 happened, it seemed like all of society was having this conversation, which presents, you know, it was incredibly challenging and incredibly painful for so many of us individually and collectively, but it also presented a wonderful opportunity to bring childcare to highlight it. Um, so we have, our mission because of that hasn't changed. We're still working for high quality, affordable childcare. But in the last six to eight weeks, what we're doing as um, employees at Let's Grow Kids has changed dramatically. So I just want to give you a quick overview of some of the things that we're doing and some of the folks that we're working with. Um, we've been working closely with Vermont's administration, with early care and education programs, with our federal delegation, with business leaders, um, state and national advocacy organizations, and many other groups. Um, we've pivoted a lot of our work to really be responsive to what we see the need is. So we've been hosting those online learning opportunities that I talked about before for early childhood educators. That's a real way for us to support your business services if you're in the field. Um, so we've answered questions about taxes and um, some of the federal programs that are coming down and what's best for early educators to take advantage of. We've also helped to create and support emergency childcare infrastructure for essential workers. We've supported childcare programs that have closed um, and in supporting their families and staff. We've launched our own emergency fund to help support childcare programs. We've supported families and businesses who are affected by childcare closures. We've also collaborated with the state and local partners to be a resource for childcare programs and early childhood educators. Um, and we've been collecting feedback from families with young children. Um, one of, you know, this webinar in particular is a way for us to gather the issues that are biggest on your mind and figure out how we can translate that into real action as we move forward. The business team has continued to support regional efforts, um, childcare in their area, and also help them pivot to what they can do to support their employees now. I would put out a specific plea to all of you. You guys are in all different counties throughout the state with all different jobs. So one of the things we'd really love to do is highlight employers who are able to meet the needs of their employees right now by offering you um, different benefits and practices that allow you flexibility. Or if your employer, if you're an essential employee and you're accessing um, essential care, we'd love to hear and tell those stories now. So my email is just emily at lessgrowkids.org. Um, please reach out or reach out in the chat function if you have a story to tell. Um, so 
you know, as I said before, and Anne has been saying, there are so many of you on this call from so many different places, and we'd really love to hear what, um, what's going on for you. So we're a community of parents and early educators and business leaders, and I think that there's another poll opportunity. Um, we'd love to know why you joined this call today. Are you stuck at home with small children and need some help? Um, are you passionate about ensuring all Vermont children have what they need to thrive? Are you concerned about the transition of going back to work and what that's gonna mean for your childcare? Are you just curious about what we have to offer? Are you eager to help and wanna know how to get involved or all of the above? So again, um, this is an opportunity for you to take that poll and let us know where you're coming from. Wow, this is incredible. We're right on track and we are using this poll to transition into answer, answering some of your questions because many of you submitted questions uh, right directly to us when you registered for this uh, for this community connection. Um, and this will be a fun way for us to have a general view of what brought you all here to join us at this particular time in this particular way over Zoom. And in a moment, Maria will uh, advance the slide and publish our results. So it looks like a lot of us are concerned about the tr transition back, which I will say um, is is a concern for all of us. These are really scary times and certainly all of us are feeling um, the stress and uncertainty of not knowing and not having any kind of a, a blueprint to follow in, in how to manage such unprecedented times. Um, also really passionate about learning about what Vermont children need um, to thrive in these times. Um, and also all of the above, which means that some of you are in fact marooned at home with small children. And so we're here to help. Um, and we'll also be covering um, some of your curiosities and the ways that you can help. So let's get into your questions. So we found that um, the questions came in three buckets. And those are written on the next slide. So you'll be able to read those three buckets. We wanted, we, we realized that a lot of you wanted to know how you can work from home with young children and also support their emotional well being. You were also curious about how you could help. And what will the reopening of childcare look like in Vermont? Um, so we're going to do our very best to share with you the information that we have, and we have some early educators on the call and our action team members to answer the first couple of questions, and then we'll, we'll get into um, a little bit more about the transition, what we know and what we don't know, and make sure to share all, all the ways that you can continue to be in the loop moving forward. So I'd like to introduce you to our first panelist, Ellen Gillette. Uh, and so Maria, if you can advance the slides one more time, we have Ellen here to answer your first question, which is, Ellen, how can parents support their own children at home with emotional breakdowns and transitions? This is a great question and um, one that parents actually asked me about when they started staying home with their kids. So I'm glad that it was asked here. Uh, one of the things that is the most important for children is consistency. So keeping a schedule and keeping it consistent and making sure meals are happening at the same time every single day and that snacks are happening at the same time that naps are happening at the same time every day. Um, these are all ways that children feel safe and connected and consistent with their schedule. 
Um, also, if it can mimic the schedule from their classroom, that really helps in kind of making that connection. So when they transition back, it makes it a little bit smoother. So this also avoids um, that hangry, you know, emotional breakdown when they've decided not to eat snacks. So making sure if you go on a walk or an adventure that you make sure you're taking snacks with you. Always important to have snacks in your pocket. Um, so when a child has an emotional breakdown, it's always important to remain calm yourself. And it's, it's so hard and like I remember it so vividly, it doesn't go away. But um, we need to be the calm during the storm. And sometimes that's really hard and it's okay to cry like ourselves, um, but we might need to take some space, but we need to hold space and allow children to feel the emotions and not say, don't cry, there's nothing to cry about, you're fine but we need to allow them to have space to feel the feelings and help them identify those feelings and you know, help them figure out coping skills, whether that's taking deep breaths, whether they need space. Um, you know, sometimes we figure out kids need space and then they'll come tell us they need a hug when they're ready. Um, so figuring out what those strategies are for certain children. Um, the other thing that I was going to suggest for parents and, you know, maybe early educators can help parents out with this is creating a visual schedule. So if children are struggling with, um, I know my daughter's going through this right now with her two-year-old is putting clothes on and her pajamas on. They're having a smackdown every night and morning to get dressed. And so creating some sort of visual for that, you know, first you do this, then you do this. Um, those are really helpful in helping children know what's expected or what needs to happen before they can move on to the next thing during the day. Um, or just having an overall visual schedule for the day. I created some for some of my kiddos in my program around um, bedtime routines because that was an issue that was they were having a really tough time with. And the only other thing that I really thought was really important to mention is that we all, I, not me necessarily, but a lot of people that are working right now and taking care of children at, time, at home at the same time, like productivity is definitely gonna go down. And I know people are trying to juggle those work times and some people are making that work by working early in the morning and late at night and during nap time and taking shifts. Um, you know, some ideas if you're on a phone call and you, you are on your shift with your child and you can't avoid that phone call, you know, taking some Play-Doh out, offering them some, you know, kitchen utensils that maybe they've never used with Play-Doh and sitting there with them while you're on a call is another way to sort of um, be with them and be able to sort of engage in a phone call at the same time. So, um, you know, there's no, there's no easy way to, you know, work and have children, which is why there's childcare. Um, so I wish there was an easy answer, but this is an unprecedented time. And right now is when your kids need you. And the biggest thing they need right now is, you know, time to play, space to play. And I've heard some kids are learning some great independent skills. So keep up the good fight. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ellen. And Ellen offered herself as a resource, so her email is here on this slide. Um, and you will, uh, we will have the, this PowerPoint slide and a recording of this available after, um, after this is complete. So if you need to look back, but if you have any specific questions you'd like to ask Ellen, she offered to be available to you. Um, and so keeping on track of how to support the emotional health of children, we have another local early educator, Dominique, who is a local preschool teacher. And my question for you, Dominique, is, um, and this question again came from the, the people who are attending this um, today, and we're wondering, as a preschool teacher, what advice do you have for parents who are working um, from home and homeschooling their children right now? That is a really good question. Um, kind of along what Ellen said, um, it is, no one has really like an easy right answer of what to do. 
Um, I, when I was kind of thinking about things that I really want to get across to the parents in my program, um, four big things came up for me. Um, one, um, show yourself grace. As parents, you need to be kind to yourself and cut yourself some slack. Like we're in a global pandemic right now. Um, there is no like rule book for how you're supposed to act right now. Um, we're figuring this all out together and you are the experts on what your family and your kids, like you're the experts on what's best for them. Um, so whatever you feel is best for them, you should, you should let yourself do. Um, that's the right thing for them. Um, the second thing is find your groove. Um, kind of what Ellen said, kids thrive on consistency and they really um, love having a routine. And um, I'm such a huge fan of visuals. Even when I run my um, gatherings with kiddos every day, we have like a little visual schedule of the things that we go through each day. And it's just, kiddos love being able to see what's going to happen next. Um, and it can even be as simple as like, like scribbling a checklist down, like, okay, bedtime, like we're going to brush our teeth, we're going to give a hug to someone, you're going to like, you find your little rituals and it can be as simple as just like drawing these little teeny figures and just letting the kid check it off or exit out, um, which can really be helpful. Um, also, um, the third thing is embrace the boredom and let your kids play. Um, we know that young children and even older children, they learn best through play and they learn best through really getting to explore what they're interested in. Um, so let go of any of those expectations of what you should be doing right now. Um, there, I mean, we know that if you're going outside and looking for signs of spring, you're learning so much science and um, those observational skills and the language. And um, while you're outside, you can look for letters in the sticks or you can even take a stick and um, draw some letters or um, draw some numbers or even just draw a picture because you get the same skills from that too. Um, in the dirt or in the sand, um, playing in water, we learn about measurement and, um, and also just letting kiddos um, have that time to be bored and really just explore what, what, um, what's really interest, interesting to them. And also um, even something as simple as like reading a book and don't be afraid to read the same book over and over again. Um, one thing parents are always apologizing to me for is like, even on our calls, like I, there's one book that I read like six gatherings in a row. And I had this one parent that like messaged me. She's like, I'm so sorry. She keeps asking me to read this book. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Like kids love reading the same books over and over again. And when they do do that, they start to um, remember the story. They're learning all those print concepts. It's, I would say snuggle your kids tight and read to them as much as, much as they want. Um, and as teachers, we can catch up your kiddos on any academics you're worried about them missing. It's much harder to mitigate some of the toxic stress effects after the fact. And the ways we can do that is just keeping a consistent routine and then connection is key. Just loving your kiddos um, and providing any way you can to have the, for them to have those relationships and those connections. Um, yeah, just love them, snuggle them. And like Ellen said, give them the space to have those feelings and even model some of these, the big feelings you're having. Cause we're all feeling the same stuff our kids are. We all miss our friends. We all miss our routine of going to work or going to school. Um, we're not really that different from these little humans. So um, yeah, that's my advice. Thank you so much, Dominique. Uh, and again, Dominique also offered to be a support to all of you. So if you'd like to email Dominique directly, her email is on this slide. Uh, and now we're gonna pivot to the second bucket of questions, which is how can I help? And so Don Irwin uh, is here as, um, really as her role as an active member of the Let's Grow Kids community. So Dawn's gonna tell you a little bit about herself and a little bit more about what you can do. Thanks, Anna. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to be here with uh, so many folks that share a common goal. Um, we all care deeply about our youngest and most vulnerable citizens, and we've all been affected by the issues that are facing uh, the early childhood education field today. 
um, about five years ago, my life changed because of Let's Grow Kids um, and their mission. Uh, back then, I was an early childhood educator. I was a mother of just my son at the time, who was two years old. Um, and I had been observing and experiencing a lot of the hardships that young families in Vermont are facing because of the child care crisis. Um, it was hard not to feel overwhelmed and hopeless um, and helpless a lot of the times. Um, and when I was talking to a friend about this, uh, she told me about Let's Grow Kids um, and the work that they were doing to create real change for the field and the children and families um, in the state. So um, back in September of that year, I walked into an action team meeting, not knowing what to expect at all. I was so nervous, um, but by the end of the meeting, I was hooked. Um, and three months later, I attended the, my very first Let's Grow Kids advocacy conference, um, and I haven't looked back ever since. Um, Let's Grow Kids and the folks a part of the organization uh, have believed in me and, and my ability to be an effective advocate for change. Um, I had zero experience and not very much confidence at all. Uh, and they taught me that the passion that I have inside and the willingness to try new things can really go a long way. Um, they gave me lots of opportunities to use the skills I had already um, had established um, to build onto new ones. Um, and slowly, uh, through very small and very, very supported steps outside of my comfort zone, I began to build um, trust in myself and uh, that I could really affect change. Um, and since that first action team meeting, I've collected petition signatures, which I'm gonna ask all of you to do right now. So if you can go to www.letsgrowkids.org, right on the main site, you'll see a green button that says sign plus. Click that sign and sign that petition. Uh, and you'll be already doing something to, uh, you know, advance change for Vermont's kids. Um, so I did, I've been doing that. Um, I've done door-to-door -door canvassing, uh, phone banking, I've been a part of two separate action teams, the Essex and Burlington team. Um, I initiated correspondence with legislators, organized events um, for folks, including a film watching event for No Small Matter, um, talking with representatives face to face. Um, and I've actually developed a pretty deep connection with Representative Mary Beth Redmond because of Let's Grow Kids, where every time we run into each other in town, we can't help but stop and talk and just be excited to, to share each other's presence, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, and I'm just here to tell you that um, if I can do it, you can do it too. Um, because of Let's Grow Kids, I've realized that um, I have a voice and I have a story worth sharing um, and, and that, I am empowered and I can create real change. And I've met so many folks um, that are talented and passionate and motivated humans um, in this community um, that are ready and willing to join forces with each other and create change in a variety of different ways um, to make a difference for all of our neighbors. Amazing, Con. you're so inspiring. Um, it's really exciting. And even in these uncertain times, you know, coming together as a community of like-minded people who have shared experiences, uh, we can really support each other. And um, that's one of the reasons why we really wanted to kick off this, this group today. Um, and this is a, you know, obviously statewide effort of everybody here. And we'd love to be able to have follow-up opportunities for people to gather in smaller communities um, and build those kinds of connections within your, within your local group. So stay tuned for more opportunities to keep getting involved and to continue the conversation. Um, now we're gonna shift over to answering the third bucket uh, questions. And so Sarah Kennedy is gonna let us know a little bit about this transition um, that we're currently in. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. So I want to thank so much Ellen and Dominique and Don for being terrific resources for all of us um, and for policymakers in the state. Um, we were really excited to get all the questions that everyone submitted ahead of time. Um, and it's also a little overwhelming, right? We're all a little overwhelmed by all of these questions. <laughs> Um, but as you have heard from folks, we are beyond committed to working closely um, as a community, 
with the state and with all of our partners across Vermont in figuring this out. But the truth is, nobody really has the answers. And I really appreciated Dominique reminding us of that. We are in the midst of a global pandemic, right? This is unprecedented for all of us. There really aren't models to work from, and we're all figuring this out as we go. And as with any new endeavor, it's all going to take some time, right? And um, as is often the case when we try to rush really complicated processes, there are going to be hiccups, and solutions will likely be imperfect, at least from the start. Um, but even with all of that, we're still steadfast in our resolve at Let's Grow Kids to find answers, and we'll work as hard as we can. Um, to make sure that the questions and concerns of parents and early educators and businesses and communities are heard, um, that we'll all together be thinking creatively and carefully and definitely be prioritizing health and safety. Um, and that what we use, that we use what we learn from the process of closing down child care programs to help reopen thoughtfully. So um, as we're as we're thinking about recovery and reopening, right? This, this next phase in the, in the unknown here. Um, our state and federal leaders are beginning to discuss terms for reopening economies. Our focus at Let's Grow Kids is, is likewise trained on how do we begin to think about reopening childcare programs. And at this time, unfortunately, we still have a lot more questions than we have answers. <laughs> and a lot of the folks whose names I recognize on this call are also asking a lot of these really great questions. Um, and that's really helping to frame the conversation. So here's what we do know about reopening, and it's not a lot yet, but the governor has indicated that childcare will likely reopen after June 1st, um, and that more information will be shared either Friday or Monday at one of his weekly, three times a week press conferences. Um, we know that the Child Development Division has been gathering input through a survey from the field, and I heard this morning that almost a thousand people have taken the survey and CDD is synthesizing all those results as they plan. I know lots of folks have been contacting us and policymakers and the state administration to, um, to share questions and concerns as they're thinking, and I know that's all being collected by CDD as they start to envision what this next phase could look like. Um, there is a webinar on Friday that Building Bright Futures has been co-hosting with the Child Development Division, these weekly Friday webinars for updates, and this Friday's is going to be starting to think about reopening. Um, and Dr. Brina Holmes from the Department of Health is going to be on that and helping to think about um, what kind of health and safety precautions the state is contemplating and how we can be starting to think about that. And of course, our Let's Grow Kids resource page will be updated regularly. Um, as information becomes available. And joining your local action team is also a great way to stay in the loop. Um, as information comes out, we'll be sharing it. And then also as we pivot towards what comes next in terms of our policy advocacy, um, that's a lot of the actions are gonna be happening. So as we, as, as legislators and the state administration and the federal um, um, government start to think about reopening of childcare, um, our legislative asks of policymakers are a little more nuanced, um, but they're actually not all that different from that slide Anna showed us from, you know, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away in January, <laughs> um, which feels like decades ago, right? Um, the things that, uh, that are needed to rebuild and reopen a thriving um, early parent education system are not actually that different now than they were then, right? We need supports for early childhood educators. We need supports for families. We need an infrastructure that supports the highest quality care for all kids. Um, and in that respect, as we're pivoting to think about the federal funding that's coming into the state um, and our advocacy moving forward, it the, the context is different now, but the underlying needs are actually not that different. So as we are talking to policymakers, um, at the Vermont legislature and in the state administration, we're really thinking about um, sort of three general buckets. We're all about the buckets today. <laughs> three, maybe it's the governor's spigot analogy that's prompting me to think about bucket, buckets. Um, but there are three buckets that we're looking at that we're still asking for support, early childhood educator supports. We're still looking to make the system work for families, be affordable and accessible, and still focusing on system supports. So as we're looking at supports for early childhood educators, 
we've heard loud and clear from the field and we are communicating this everywhere we can, including in legislative testimony. Um, Allie and I and some others are gonna be testifying on Friday in the House Human Services Committee and I think Senate Health and Welfare, we've been giving testimony to various legislative committees. I don't think we're talk about reopening. We're really talking about the fact that it needs to be in phases. We can't just like magically reopen childcare, right? It needs to be carefully phased in and thoughtful. We need PPE. I just saw a question come in in the chat. We need PPE, right? We need access to supplies that are going to support health and safety of kids and of early childhood educators. Um, that needs to be a key part of the planning. And we need wage supports um, and, and scholarship supports for early childhood educators. We know that early childhood educators are being asked to do more than ever as we think about reopening programs and those who've been providing care to children of essential workers. We need people to be well compensated for this and we need them to be well prepared. So we are continuing to, to advocate for um, additional wage supports and scholarship supports for early childhood educators. And then as we think about um, the affordability and accessibility for families, um, we are continuing to talk about the fact that although the state has been doing some really um, innovative nationally work to try to support families and early childhood education programs during this closure period, it's still a struggle for a lot of families. So we are strongly encouraging policymakers to think about continuing current programs that support um, families uh, and early childhood programs. Um, we're encouraging them to think about the Child Care Financial Assistance Program and continuing to make progress in terms of raising rates there in a way that can support families' access and also support continued payments to um, child care programs. Um, and we're, we're shifting to talk about that as opposed to sort of the, the rates conversation we were having before. We're really talking about it in the context of COVID. There are a lot of demands being placed on programs right now, um, and there are a lot of additional needs in addition to the underfunded needs that were there before. And then the third bucket that we're really focused on is so unsexy, but it's the IT infrastructure. Um, and it is a key part of any future system and in this recovery. Um, we know, and the, the Department for Children and Families has acknowledged that there have been issues getting payments out. Um, we had a difficult time setting up a system of care for essential workers initially. There are lots of things that would have been a lot smoother in this response if we had a function, like a high functioning IT system. And there's been a lot of conversation in recent years about the need for that. And there's a really clear opportunity here to use federal funds, one-time funds to be supporting the IT system that we need to move forward. So the last thing that I'll say about our sort of policy update, um, and you have probably, if you have been paying any attention to any news headlines anywhere, the state budget is bad. Um, the legislature and the administration are working um, together to analyze the scope of the problem and figure out where we can be plugging holes with federal funds and where we can't, and to look at what does the future look like for this state. Vermont is not alone in this. Every single state is in a bad way. And in some ways, Vermont is better off than most, but it's still a very dire budget situation. Um, and so that's the context within which we're sort of thinking about our advocacy. And it's part of why it's amazing that child care has received the kind of support that it has um, because things are really bad at the state budget level. So that's the context in which we're thinking about our advocacy. Um, I'll also say if you want to learn more about the details of what the legislature is working on and how the budget process is working, um, where we co-hosted on this past Monday a webinar with the Vermont Early Childhood Advocacy Alliance, and that's available on our website. And it goes more into detail about um, sort of our the policy positions that we're taking right now, and also like what's the legislature doing and how can you access their um, their work right now. Now, turn it back to you, Anna. Thank you. I was actually trying to answer some of your questions live, and I'm still learning the text, so we're going to answer those as we go. Um, so we're going to we're going to shift to the big picture. Um, if you've been paying attention to national headlines, um, the situation is dire for childcare. Um, it's just outright frightening, um, and. Yet when we shift our focus to our local headlines, the, the picture becomes clear that Vermont is actually um, maybe even light years ahead of other states. So, you know, we 
here in Vermont, we just want to be clear that our state leaders, um, you know, had acknowledged the vision and the and the way to make um, dramatic investments in our child care system because of the incredible advocacy advocacy work of LGK supporters um, and the the support that. Uh, the early childhood advocates have been doing for years. Your voices, your emails, your phone calls, your stories, your votes, all of your hard work to ensure our lawmakers understand how critical child care is um, for working families in our economy um, and for our, our sweet youngest children for whom we really believe in their future. Um, this was all you know, this is all evolving because of your hard work. So we really want to take this opportunity to thank you. Um, thank you so much. And these headlines are actually hyperlinks. So when you look at this PowerPoint later, you can click on them and see the news. You can also check um, on our website. We actually have a section for news and events and that those will be updated regularly um, with some of these um, top headlines and our events page will be updated with information about future webinars and other ways you can get involved. Um, so, you know, while our state's investments have been innovative in the country, they're, they're also imperfect solutions. And um, the momentum we've built to this date is because of supporters like you, and we will continue to need to work to create the early childhood system that we dream of, um, that truly meets the needs of all of our children. So what's next? Let's move to the next slide about how you can take action. And this is where I'll answer a few more of your questions. Uh, we had a question about how can you join your local action team? So I um, will have one of the Let's Grow Kids staff, maybe Natalie, could you please paste in a link to the Let's Grow Kids Mobilize page? And it's there that you will find contact information for all these lovely people whose faces you see on this slide. This is our field team and the field managers are supporting people all across Vermont um, to take action. They'll connect with you one-on-one -on -one and also give you opportunities to connect with your local community and your action team. So you can, um, you can get in touch with them by emailing them directly and you can check out some more details about that on our Mobilize page. Um, let's see, there's so many awesome things you can do. So keep in mind to check our resource page for continual and regular updates. Also, um, as we move forward, it's gonna be really important to build relationships with your legislator. So one action we're asking you to take is to send a thank you to your local legislator and the governor and the administration. It's really important that they hear words of gratitude for us now and that we build positive relationships with them and that they see us as a resource. So you can write a simple email to your legislator and the governor saying thank you so much for keeping childcare a top priority and you can remind them what we'll need that we will need continued investments in the child care system in order to continue to stabilize this system for working families and for children and for early educators as we move forward. And then simply let them know that you are a resource and if they have any questions about how policy is affecting the local community that they can reach out to you with their questions. Um, and contacting your legislators is one of the most powerful things you can do and we're here to help you. So. Natalie, if you would po paste another link in the chat, we have, a, we have a specific tool, our legislator dashboard, where you can type in your personal address and it will show you exactly who your legislators are and there's a simple tool to email them right from that website. And this helps us stay in the loop. So if you use that tool, then we know which legislators are hearing from you. And if you already have a personal relationship with your legislator and maybe you're calling them up on the phone or you have their personal email saved in your computer, then you can just shoot us an email, either one of the field managers, myself, uh, Anna at letsgrowkids.org or Sarah, 
one of our policy team members, um, just to let us know that you've made that contact and also to let us know if your legislator does reach back out to you and has some questions. That keeps us all in the loop and that creates a real positive and powerful impact when our voices are coordinated and, um, and we're working as a collective force together. Um, let's see, I have to check my notes. So um, we're gonna take a little bit of a, a poll in a moment, but I just wanted to remind you of a few other next steps. Um, we will send you a follow-up email with a short survey and we'll look forward to hearing from you um, through that tool about how this went for you and what else we can offer as uh, supports. We um, please continue to send us your questions. So if you continue to have questions in the next 10 minutes, you can put those into the Q&A tool here. We will be pulling a report of those questions and be able to get back to you with answers. But don't be afraid to reach out to us um, after this with additional questions. We want to continue to hear from you as we, um, you know, as we've been really seen as a resource by legislators and the administration, we want to make sure we're best informed as to what, what you're all thinking when we have a chance to talk with them. Um, and stay tuned for more, inf in, you know, more information from CDD and don't, don't forget to attend that webinar on Friday if you're really curious about some of the details they have. Um, so the three main actions I want you to think about, and we'll have a longer list and a poll for you to take, but consider thanking your legislator and the governor. That is a really powerful thing you can do. Please consider joining an action team and staying in the loop on a regular basis. Um, an action team is where you may also have contact with a local early educator um, if you're a parent and have ongoing questions about how to support your kids. We all share our expertise in action teams, so that's a, a great resource. Um, and the third thing is to share your story with us. We also, on our website, have a tool where you can um, share your story because stories are one of the most powerful tools we use in testimony um, and in our advocacy in general, They're really giving a personal view into the child care crisis in Vermont. So please consider sharing your story with us and stay tuned as we will have a virtual training on how to best use your story. So there will be some great um, story building tools. So we wanna just get a quick pulse of what are you committed to doing next? So we have a poll that Maria is gonna to offer to you. So uh, if you have not yet, are you committed to signing the petition? Will you email your legislator? Are you gonna join an action team or invite some of your friends and family to join the Let's Grow Kids community? You can send them the recording of this webinar. You can encourage them to join an action team with you. Um, will you be attending that webinar on Friday. Um, and you can also donate to our emergency fund. It's a, an incredible way to keep supporting our childcare system throughout the state. And I did see there were some um, conversations in the chat that people were only allowed to pick one of the polls and um, we're still learning all the tools here and if you're only allowed to choose one but you wish you could name more than one feel free to let us know that in the chat too. And then we'll move to the next slide and publish the results. And I want to apologize if anyone did not see the poll. Again, we're doing our very best with the technology that we have at hand, um, but feel free to type into the chat what you are committed to doing next. I also just want to note about the CDD and BBF webinar on Friday. That is for early educators. It's not um, a webinar for parents, and I know they had a lot of subscribers already. So just to let you know, that is just for early educators to join that one but we will have updates for you and everything, all of the questions that are coming out around what this reopening looks like and what you can expect for your programs, we'll be able to update you after that happens. Thanks, Emily. That's a great reminder. 
I did see a question come in about the Friday webinar with BBF, whether it will be recorded. It typically is recorded, so I would expect that, yeah. Um, and so just to further describe, our events page has all upcoming webinars on it, so you can find out any upcoming resources there. And then our coronavirus resource page actually has access to all of our recorded webinars um, so that you can continue to use those uh, and that information moving forward. Um, and now I want to make sure you get to know Beale. She's such a valued member of our Let's Grow Kids team, and she's going to um, offer us a, a closing and a thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, everyone, so much for being here. Um, I know that everyone throughout the day, um, I, I do want to especially thank our panelists, Don and Dominique and Ellen. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and expertise um, with all of us. Uh, and then I also just wanted to um, close out by saying uh, the theme, I think, of this webinar today is that the Let's Grow Kids movement is a movement because of all of you. So um, it's your support, whether it's by sharing your story or joining an action team or contacting your legislator or being a child care provider or being a parent. Um, or making a donation, all of those things are um, ways that the Let's Grow Kids movement is possible. So thank you. Um, it's truly people powered in every single way and um, everything uh, that we do now and every action that you take now is leading us all to the place that we wanna be, which is where we have a resilient and equitable childcare system that works for children and families and early educators and for all of us. So I just wanted to say thank you all to each and every one of you for being here today and for giving in all the ways that you do um, to our kids and families and communities. Oh, well, thank you, everybody. This has been so lovely. Uh, we will allow for the last few minutes, it looks like there's lots of um, chat still coming through. Um, we really, really appreciate you and please continue to stay in touch. And if this was valuable to you and you want to invite someone, um, again, they can watch the recording, but we all will also be hosting another uh, identical conversation at 8 p.m. tonight. So that's another opportunity. Um, I hope everybody is healthy and safe out there and we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Bye.